hey, this is the unknown comic. Do you hear about the guy who lost the whole left side of his body? He's all right now. <laughs> it's fine with me. Now, you have different types of bags. You have a bag that has tissue coming out of the top. And mm -hmm. Yeah, no, actually, it's all pretty much one bag, but I, I, I do a lot to a bag before I do my nightclub show. There's a lot that's done with the bag uh, in order to, uh, to, uh, to do the things that I do in, in the act that I do. Uh, but uh, you've seen the show, so you know I just do like about ten minutes with the bag on, and I do the most of the show without the bag. And I actually prefer the show uh, doing working now without the bag. It's just a lot easier to breathe for one thing. But the bag was interesting, especially when I did the gong show, because I did I had so many, you know, I did so many things with the bag. I had uh, I had my grandfather come on the show with a wrinkled bag over his head. You know, I I brought my dog on with a bag over his entire body and did jokes like you've heard of a boxer. This is a bagger. I, I was going to name him Chooser, but baggers can't be choosers. You know, and I brought my cat uh, on, put him in the bag, and let the cat out of the bag. And I had a lady one time rush up and saying that I was the father of her child, and I said, you can't prove that, and she had it like a baby with a bag over its head, you know. Do you write all your own material? Well, in the beginning, it was nothing but one-liners, you know, just old one-liners that I could find anywhere, and then subsequently, I got into creating these bag ideas, and that's all stuff that I, I created, too. And now in my act, I would say I write most of it, but I have, uh, you know, purchased jokes. In L.A., a lot of the comics, you know, there's a lot of comedy writers around that you buy jokes off of, yes. Now, there was a story that you were talking about when you were in Vegas, and you had just recently been known in the gong show, and you really didn't have that much material, and that you hired, what, a backup band? And oh, yeah, when I, when I first uh, was hired in Las Vegas, I had very... We well, first of all, we're not going to be telling them a secret that they don't already know. What? The people that hired you in Vegas. No, 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 it's no big deal. No, uh, actually, they hired me because they saw me on Carson. I did a, you know, a couple of Carson shows back then as a unknown comic, and so the Sahara Hotel people at the time asked me if I wanted to do a, you know, a show at their, their lounge, you know, and they offered me very good money, but I had no real act at the time. I had maybe about 12, 15 minutes of material that I could, you know, do at one time, so what I did is I, I hired a couple of girls, put bags over their heads, called them the Bagettes, and did a whole dance number, and I had a band called the Brown Baggers, and uh, it's amazingly enough, that band that I, that I started back then was with a guy named Steve Toma, uh, was my keyboard player, who is now the Heaters with Bruce Willis. <laughs> the band that I started is now with okay. Bruce, <laughs> so he's doing okay. Uh, and uh, so anyway, that band, the Brown Baggers, and the girls, the baguettes, was, was a show that I put together, and I used all kinds of bag things, like I had my grandfather on with uh, uh, in the show, and and the whole show was it was. Uh, related to the bag at that time, but unfortunately the money I was getting paid, I was spending more than I was getting paid, so it was actually costing me to put on my shows in Las Vegas in those days. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Murray, for being a part of the show. Much success for you in t Truth or Consequences, and uh, we'll see you again. Good. Thank you uh, for inviting me. Bye-bye. Stay tuned for more right after this.